Honest Christian Q&A. Let's get into it. We're going to be talking about doctrine and beliefs, calling and ministry. Are they the one? Who is the one? All of that and more in today's video. Let's go. And we're recording. Hey there YouTube, my name is Kirby as a boss. Welcome to my living room. Welcome to my channel. And we're continuing the conversation based off of last week's video where we are doing an honest Q&A talking about relationships, especially for the Christian girlies and guys out there. So if you are subscribed here and you've hit the bell and you get the notifications for when videos go out every Sunday, then you know I posted something to my little YouTube community being like, hey, let's talk about Christian dating. Because I have gotten so many comments being like, make a video on this, make a video on this. I have so many questions, I need your advice. I'm here to give all the advice. But our first question out of the five questions we're answering today comes from Just Jess Channel. I think they actually sent in two questions, but the first one is, should I address doctrine on the first date? Honestly, if the conversation leads to it and it makes sense, then I think totally. I don't think that you have to necessarily agree dogmatically on every single issue, but doctrinally, yes, I think that really matters in Christian dating relationships, especially for those of us who are in ministry or who really have deep convictions about scripture. Are there certain things where in relationships in the past it's like, hey, like you have this specific view, I have this specific view, it doesn't necessarily like cause conflict. Okay, maybe that's all right. But there are certain things, at least in relationships I've had where it's like, no, I firmly believe this. And the fact that you don't believe this, I know we're gonna butt heads. I know that it's going to affect us moving forward in certain decisions, in certain areas, in certain seasons of life. You really need to weigh those things out when it comes to doctrine and beliefs. Now, I do wanna classify what I meant by when I said dogma. So doctrine is like, what the Bible straight up says is doctrine, is biblical. Dogma is more so what we as humans have interpreted from the scriptures and we give it a specific class or a name. A specific one I can give you is like complementarianism versus like egalitarianism, where it's like the women in ministry, like that's a big one, right? Did the creation of the world happen over seven days or was it millions of years? Like those are dogmatic issues, even though scripture says very specific things on it. There are, there are assumptions or interpretations that come from it that aren't necessarily specifically defined based off of like a conglomerate of verses. Another example is Calvinism and Arminianism. Those are dogmas, not specific doctrine. Doctrine influences the dogmas. That's your theology lesson for today, okay? But I think those are definitely important conversations to have, maybe not if on the first date as you're getting to know each other even at like a chemistry level. So knowing like in the first few dates and conversations that you do have, those are important things to bring up because it's like, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my efforts. I don't want to fall in love with this person. Then it's like, oh, you completely have like a heretical view on something. And like, we're never going to get past this, but now my feelings are involved and I can't move on. Like, you don't want to get to that point. Have that conversation at least within maybe like the first three to five dates. That's, a, that's at least my advice. The second question, which comes from Tavery Day. Love it. It's spelled really cool. They were asking basically like, do you need to have the same calling and the same mission in mind? Like, does that matter when it comes to dating the person that you're dating and finding the one? So first and foremost, I'm gonna read 2 Corinthians 6, 14. It says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness? This isn't necessarily what that, the context of this verse means, but I bring up this to say, okay, who you are yoked with matters. The person that you are doing life with, that you are going in direction with matters, especially for marriage, because that is a lifelong commitment till death do you part, baby. And here's the thing. You don't have to marry someone that does exactly what you're doing, that has the exact calling that you have. But I think mission is where you need to be aligned. What is our mission in life? Are we running in the same direction, even though we might be in different lanes? Maybe you're in the same lane. Like maybe both of you are like, we want to be missionaries and we want to lead worship in a country in this continent. And it's like amazing. Not only are your callings aligned, but your mission is clearly aligned. But there are other times where it's like, okay, she wants to be a school teacher and he wants to be a full-time pastor, but their heart is we want to 
to have a family, like their mission is we want to have a family and change a generation. Great, you're running in the same direction even though your callings are on different paths. You know what I mean? We as individuals are gonna have different strengths, different weaknesses, different giftings, all of those things. And that's beautiful to see how they complement one another in a marriage. That's one of the coolest parts about being married is that this person is better at me than these things and we both share interests in these things and dreams and desires, whatever. But running in the same direction, running in the same direction with that, linked arms, going at the same pace, that is what matters more than what the method of that might look like. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Question number three comes from Oreo3241. How did God help you to trust? I have had a lot of trauma in my life and I always seem to attract troubled people. I know it's a loaded question, but you have any advice from a spiritual POV? I do, because as someone who also has a lot of trauma <laughs> from life and also from relationships, I really had to learn how to trust God with that area of my life, but also trust myself and trust other people in that area of my life. I have a few little tips for you. So the first tip I have for you is you need to forgive. You need to forgive yourself for maybe areas where you initiated or instigated or got yourself into those areas in seasons and situations where there was trauma. You also need to forgive those people who caused trauma in your own life. And I made a video a few weeks back called Forgiving Them Freed Me or something along those lines. I'll link it down below. Go watch that if you need it because releasing those people releases you and brings freedom into your life. Forgiveness is for you. But when you forgive, you're able to actually process and then move on and grow and heal from that. It says in Matthew 18, 21 through 22, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Endlessly, we are called to forgive. The second thing that you need to do is you need to learn how to trust God with your heart, with your life with your relationships and trust that he is going to take care of you as an individual and your partner as an individual. Here's the thing, God loves you so much you don't even realize it. God loves you so much. He does not want to link you up with a person and intentionally wreak havoc and doom over your life. Does he allow us to go through trials? Yeah, I'm not gonna argue on the fact that God allows us to go through certain situations where there is suffering and growth and navigating those things. And we also live in a broken world with broken people. Uh, like, let's not forget that, that we live in a sinful world where people sin against us. But we need to trust that the person who wounded us isn't God and that God is actually gonna be the one that's gonna do the healing, the comforting and the good work in your life to heal you from that past trauma, to make you the version that you have always been called and created to be. And to then, if he ushers you into a relationship, to usher you and give you peace to go into a relationship with a person who has hopefully also obediently listened to God and done the work in their life from the trauma that they have so that you both can grow together in your love for God and your love for one another and even your love for yourself as an individual through what you've been through. The third thing is that you need to accept the reality that we live in a fallen world and people are gonna hurt you. Even if they are the best people with the best intentions, like people are gonna fail you. Like we have been born into a fallen world and we all have a sinful nature. So we have the ability to choose a person who is humble enough to see their fault, to admit it and to grow from it and to have those healthy conversations of communicating areas that do trigger you, that do bring up trauma, that you are also responsible of, of growing through and healing through too. Fourth question that we are answering is based on commitment and the idea of the one. And it was sent in by Just Just Channel. Ah, see, she did send in two questions. This question says, I am afraid to commit to someone because I don't wanna risk them not being the one. How do I overcome this? This actually feeds into our fifth question, but I'll read that in a second. Second. I'll answer this briefly without giving too much away for the next question, the final question. So I firstly want to say, I don't believe in the concept of the one. And I'll go into that more in the next question. Modern day dating is very different than what we see back in like the historical time of Jesus. Like that wasn't a thing. But now with modern day dating, I think that we can use it in a way that 
can be God glorifying and help us to find the one. Not every person that I dated was the one, but you know what it did? It helped me to factor out and factor in attributes, values, things in general that I wanted to find in the one whenever I broke out of those relationships and broke up with that person or they broke up with me. Oh my gosh, my leg is falling asleep. Whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My legs. Oh, why didn't the why didn't the fish say my fin? Why am I leg? Fish don't even have legs. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'll get back to the question in a second. Whoa. But here's the thing. In every relationship that you are in or go through, God will either give you peace or not. God will highlight the red flags and the green flags, and you can use that to make like a mental list of what it is that you truly value. Not just what your preferences are. What are the core values in a person that you want to see in a spouse, in a father, in the leader of your household, or to my men out there who are watching, in a wife, in a mother. Like that's what we are looking for when we are dating. Like we are sifting for gold here. That's what you're looking for in dating. It helps you to know what the one is gonna look like specifically for you. I actually had a lot of people asking the same question, but I'll read two of them. The first one comes from Sharon Fyri2188. And it says, how do you identify the one? Is there really only one person meant for you? A similar question was by Han Rams. And it said, are there signposts for the man slash woman God wants you to be with? What are some ways that you can know or figure it out? Don't necessarily feel like there is just one specific person out there for everyone. Now, God gave me peace about my husband, Richard, and he is the love of my life. I do not wanna be with anybody else but him. I'm in love with him and he's in love with me and I love that. <laughs> love, 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 right? But do I think that if I didn't marry Richard and never married somebody else or married somebody else that I would ruin the relationship time continuum and then someone would marry the wrong person and then blah, 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 like no. No, literally no, I don't think so. We need to use wisdom and discernment with who we choose and God will also give us peace about who we choose. But I, I do think God gives us a choice. And that was something that for a long time, I didn't think I had. I was like, God, I don't think that like, I will ever have the freedom to choose who I wanna be with. But like, God allowed me to make that decision. And I remember he specifically came to me one day, like spoke to my spirit one day and said, like, I trust you to make this decision. But I also, in that, trusted that God would give me peace in my decision because he has given me discernment and I know the scriptures and I know what good values and good morals are and what my values and morals are to make a wise decision consulted and led by and confirmed by his peace. So there's a really good book on this and it's called Love That Last by Jefferson Bethke. I'll link it down below. And it really helps me with that concept of the one and knowing if they're the one. My friends, Nick and Chelsea Hurst also came out with a book called Marriage Minded that helps you to really identify if you and the person you're dating are ready for marriage or if you guys are even compatible and right for one another to be married. So I'll link that below as well. But let me just list out a few questions that I want you to ponder that might help you making that decision of, okay, do I want to enter into a relationship with this person? Number one, do they love God and follow his word? Number two, do they have a vision for their life and have a work ethic to pursue the calling God has for them? Number three, are they truthful yet compassionate and kind in their approach to communicating truthfully? Number four, do you share the same biblical values, morals, and convictions? Number five, do you share the same values on other issues of importance? Number um, six, do you both see your callings, dreams, paths, mission aligning in terms of future goals even though they might be different are they at least heading in the same direction do they treat people with respect kindness and empathy are they willing to resolve conflict and how do they act in seasons of stress anger loss hurt etc are they open and honest about finances and do they have goals with this and do they have expectations the next question do they respect your boundaries and also do they love you well? I think these are all really valid questions. I'm sure there's so many more that we can add to this list. And if there are some that I haven't touched on, then I'll comment them down below. But I also encourage you to comment some things down below that you think are really important questions to ask or things to look for or avoid when it comes to assessing if this person is a good dating partner, future fiance, and most importantly, spouse and parent to your future children as well. Anyways, those are the questions that y'all sent in. I can always 
always make a part three, a part four. And if you did watch part one, go check that out right after this video. But until next week's video, when the next video drops on a Sunday, you can subscribe, you can hit the bell, you can leave a like on this video. You can follow me on all my other social media, which is linked down below. That's all I gotta say. I love you guys. Happy relationship cultivating. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Love ya.